When you're applying for a new role, there is a few things you expect from your future employer. Things like good salary, pension, health insurance, paid holiday, bonuses, flexible working hours, etc, etc. However, as a data scientist or data analyst, there is a few more things, non-tangible things, that you should look for when applying for a new role. In this video, I'm going to be sharing the four things you need to consider or look for in a company before you apply for a new data scientist or data analyst role. The first thing you should do is to check or ask if your new employer offers any data-related training. As a data scientist or a data analyst, you want to keep learning new tools and new techniques, new ways of doing things, smarter ways of doing things. This is actually unavoidable considering how fast the data industry runs. Therefore, you need to ensure that your new employer will offer you some sort of training. Some examples now are the following. The first example is a graduate scheme. If you're applying for a graduate role, check if there is a graduate scheme in place, what kind of tools and skills is this scheme going to teach you, and if there is a qualification upon completion. The second example is in-house training. Check again what kind of tools and skills they can teach you, and how often are they going to be running this in-house training, and who is going to be teaching it. This benefit is actually amazing because you get industry experts to teach you how to apply data analytics or data science or machine learning in real life projects over what you're going to learn online. The third example is a training budget. Check how much you can spend every year on training. Again, this benefit is amazing as you can be taking online courses or part-time masters and expensing it through your new employer. Another example is data events budget. This can be considered as training as you can attend data events and learn about the latest news, tools, techniques and technologies out there from industry experts. The final example I have is dedicated days of training where you can uh, take one day a month for example and spend your whole day training and learning what you want and not do actual work. Top tier companies will offer everything I have mentioned, however, I would say if you manage to get two out of the five, you should be satisfied in terms of training and learning new things. By the way, if you feel that you're getting enough value out of this video, please click that like button and subscribe to my channel. The second thing you should do is to ensure that the industry or the business area you will be joining interests you. Now, this is a tricky one, especially for large organizations, so I'm going to give you an example. Let's assume that you have applied for a data scientist or a data analyst position within Microsoft and you managed to get that job. You expected that you will be running machine learning models with data industry experts. However, you ended up working within the finance team running financial reports or financial modeling. Now, for some people, this could be very interesting, but for some other, not. My point here is that you need to ensure that you know exactly which team within the organization you will be joining and what kind of data analysis or projects you will be running within that team. If you're joining a data consultancy or a data agency, then you should make sure you read about the clients they have and the industries they're operating in. The more the clients and the more the industries, the better it's going to, the better it is going to be for you as you can gain exposure into multiple different industries and business areas. Back to my initial point now, some data consultancies or data agencies specialize in only one industry. Let's, for example, healthcare. And maybe you don't want to work with healthcare data. Therefore, you should make sure you do your research before you apply for a new role. The third thing you should do is to check the technological stack of the company. You need to ensure that the company you will be joining is using technologies that you personally find interesting, technologies you will want to learn and use on a day-to-day -day basis. You will be amazed by how many of the big players out there are not using advanced technologies. Therefore, you will need to ask in your interview what the tech stack of the company is and if they have any future plans to use different technologies. Considering that in a few years all the companies will be forced to move to the cloud, 
and your potential employer did not factor this in and has no future plans of using cloud technologies like Azure, AWS, and GCP, then as a data scientist or data analyst, you will be left a bit behind from the market. Therefore, checking the tech stack of the company is very important. Again, as a data analyst or data scientist, I would recommend to go for companies that already have and use SQL, Python, R, visualization tools like Power BI, Tableau, ClickSense, and cloud technologies like Azure, AWS, or GCP. The fourth and final thing you should do is to check the completed projects in the company's website. By doing this, you will gain a very good understanding of the kind of skills and expertise the company you are applying for has and the kind of skills and techniques you would expect to learn by joining this firm. This is actually very useful for more advanced positions as data scientists always want to work on very exciting projects using cutting edge technologies and making a lot of impact. An experienced person can understand the level of analytics the company has by studying the completed projects in the company's website. Afterwards, they can decide if they want to join this firm to learn more or if they find the level of analytics very basic. Right, I hope you enjoyed this video and you've gained a very good understanding of the things you should look for in your future employer. If you did enjoy this video, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or you have different views about the things I've discussed, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching.